Hello students, it's your history teacher and I'm here with another online lecture. Today with two topics for this week. The first one is Samos Empire, which was the first territorial state on our territory that we were the part of. You know, even though that Slovak territory used to be a part of other states before, for example, Banya's kingdom that I mentioned during the ancient Rome, because it was there during the Marcomannic Wars, it was before the Slavs inhabited this area, okay? So, before our Slavic ancestors settled there. So, practically, Samos Empire is the first state that we are interested in because it was the first state of the Slavs in modern-day Slovak territory. We have a little information about this state, most of it is just from archaeology because there were everyday life artifacts found. One thing we know is that after the invasion of the Avars, who were originally from Asia, the Slavs were used to fight in the first line against the neighbor tribes. We have evidence about this fact. What we also know is that the first name connected to our Slavic history appeared in the 7th century AD in Chronicle of Fredegar. Chronicle of Fredegar is the most important source of information for this period. Fredegar was the author of this chronicle, so the book that was written like a diary, so we can say he was historian that was writing down everything that was happening in that period. This chronicle contains a reference about Samo. This man was a Frankish merchant, so he was not of Slavic origin, he was Frankish, from Frankish Empire. He was merchant from the Sinonian country, and he helped the Slavs against the Avars. You know, historians think that he supplied the Slavs with the arms, so with the weapons, and the Slavs were so grateful that they elected him a king, or Rex as was written in the chronicle. So Rex is a synonym for a king. So this is how we know about Samos empire. You can see this empire in the picture on the left. Okay, so you can imagine which modern day territories belong to this early medieval state. And as you can see, it mostly contained the Western Slavs. So the Samos empire was the West Slavic tribal union. It existed between the years 631 and 658, and according to the excavations, the empire was situated in present-day Slovakia, Moravia, Lower Austria, and Slovenia. The center of this empire was around Moravia and Nitravia. Moravia and Nitravia nie sú dnešné štáty, ale ide o územia. Moravia je teda dnešná Morava, čiže časť Českej republiky, a Nitrava je územie povodí rieky Nitra, okolo mesta Nitra. So the main sources for this period is Chronicle of Ferdegar and archaeology, as you can see. The most famous event of Samo's career was his victory over the Frankish royal army under Dagobert I. It happened in 631 or 632 near Vogatisburg. Again, we know about this from the Chronicle of Fredegar. Dagobert I was a king of Frankish Empire. Although in the map you don't have any borders, you can easily imagine that the neighbor of Samos Empire was Frankish Empire. So some territorial disputes might have been cause of the conflict. So we know why this happened, we know when it happened. We know that it was in Vogatisburg, but the problem is that we don't know where the Vogatisburg is. For example, there is a theory that it's probably somewhere in Lower Austria or around Vienna, Bratislava or in like southern Moravia, so in this area probably, but we're really not sure because we do not know a city under this name. After Samuel's death, we have 
no information about Slavic rulers for following 150 years. This was mostly because of weak economy and low social relations. The empire disintegrated and territory was ruled by the Avars again. Because after the king Samuel died, nobody was strong enough to take over the power. So this empire was disintegrated and the Avars invaded it again and so our territory was ruled by them for the next 150 years. Here I have two pictures. As you can probably guess, the picture on the left is Samo, the Frankish merchant, and we think he looked like this, but of course there's no evidence for his looks. It just according to the description and previous depictions and on the right you have more exact map so you can see that Samos Empire is the yellow territory under there's the green territory which is the land of the Avars and then you can see also Frankish Empire which is in the west in this map there's also Vogatisburg marked but not once not twice but price. So these are like possible locations, as I mentioned. At least archaeologists and historians think so. Okay, so please study with the map. It can be a great help for you. Okay, and I will move to our next topic, and it's Pribina and Moimir, and the next destiny of our territory. You know, after this 150 years of the reign of the Avars, there is some information in the Frankish Chronicles again. To be specific, two names. Moimir I, the Prince of Moravia, and Pribina, the Prince of Nitrava. I've already mentioned these two territories, and from the Frankish Chronicles, we know that in this time, they used to be independent principalities. Okay, so the Principality of Moravia, ruled by Moimir I, and the Principality of Nitrava, ruled by Bribina. These two became the first historical rulers of our ancestors. So Bribina for the Slovakia and Moimir for the Moravians. Or the Czechs. Okay, as you can see in the map, this is where the two principalities were located. So Gribina is our first known ancestor and ruler. Well, the question is, how did we got from the Avar domination? The answer is that it was disorganized by Karlman, the well-known emperor of the Frankish Empire, and this was the beginning of Principality of Nitra and Principality of Moravia because the Avars were defeated by Karl Mann. The cultural and ethnic differences among populations of these two principalities, so Moravia and Nitravia, were minimal because both of these principalities were created by the Western Slavs. In the 9th century, the Christianization of the Slavs started when the first church in Nitra was consecrated by Archbishop Adalram of Salzburg. This is important because Adalram, the Archbishop of Salzburg, was a member of Western Christianity and he brought this Western Christianity to our territory. This Western Christianity is the core of Roman Catholic and Protestant religion, okay? Then we have Eastern Christianity, which is Orthodox. This was caused by this schism that we've talked about in previous topics. It is also important because of the other thing, and it's because it's the first written record of the building of Christian church at Slavonic place, okay? So Nitra was the first Slavnik place where the Christian church was built. So these two principalities were very similar, they were independent, 
living their independent lives until the year 843, when conflict started between Pribina, the prince of Mitrava, and Moni, the first prince of Moravia, because of their need to expand. So they were greedy, they wanted to expand their territory. And in this conflict, Moimir I was the winner. He defeated Pribina, who with part of his followers fled to exile and settled down in Hungary, nearby Balaton Lake. Here, he founded his hill fort called Blatnohera. So Moimir I was successful in this, in his expanding and he united Moravia with Nitra, and by this act, he established a new state called Great Moravia, because it was bigger. In fact, there is also other reason why this was called Great Moravia, and it's because it was named by the Constantine, the Byzantine em Emperor, who called it Magna Moravia, because Magna also means distant and also big. That's why it was called like that. Moimir I was the first king of Great Moravia, and Pribina was in exile in Hungary in his hill fort Blatnohrad because he failed in this conflict. Here I have pictures of these two princes. So we have Pribina on the left and Moimir I on the right. Okay, I want you to remember these pictures, I can put it into test, so you should recognize Moimir the first, Rubina, and also Samo by their depictions. These pictures were made according to earlier depictions, so that's why we at least know a little bit how they probably looked like. And also there were some artifacts found like clothing, jewelry and so on okay so that's it i will do just quick revision so what you should remember samos empire was the first state on our territory of which the slavs were a part of we know that from the chronicle of fredegar because there was the reference about samo a frankish merchant who helped the slavs against the avars and they elected him a king. It was the West Slavic Tribal Union and existed between the years 641 and 658 AD. It consisted of modern-day Slovakia, Moravia, Lower Austria and Slovenia. The center was around Moravia and Nitrava. The most famous event of Samos' career was his victory over the Frankish royal army, led by the king Dagobert I. And it happened during the Vogatisburg, but we do not know where the Vogatisburg is, but Samo won this battle. This successful empire ended by Samo's death because of weak economy and low social relations. Territory was ruled by the Avars again for the next 150 years. You should recognize Samo in the picture and you should know the location of Samo's empire, its neighbors and so on from the map. Pribina and Moimir were the two princes of two principalities, Moravia and Nitrava. Principality of Nitra and Pribina are very important for us because Pribina is in fact the first historical ruler of our ancestors. He was Slav, he was ruler of Slavic territory that is in present-day Slovakia. Domination of Avars was disorganized by Kailman, and this was the beginning of these principalities. These tr principalities were very similar because they were both created by the Western Slavs. In the 9th century, the Christianization of the Slavs started when the Adalram Salzburg Archbishop consecrated the first church in Nitra. It was the first building of Christian church at Slavonic place. Everything was fine until the conflict started between Pribina and Moimir I because of their need to expand. Moimir I won the conflict, defeated Pribina, and he had to fled to exile and settle down in Hungary nearby Balaton Lake, where he founded Hillfort Blatnohrad. Moimir I united Moravia and Nitrava and established a new state called Great Moravia. So that's it. If you have any questions, you can contact me anytime. And until the next.
online lecture, study on a regular basis, and bye.